We've uh, taken some time so far in this series and looking at Romans chapter 12, and we'll, we'll be back there looking there in just a moment, but also exploring some other writings of the Apostle Paul. But we've talked about what it looks like to live an unaltered life, a life that is presented to God uh, on an altar as a, as a sacrifice, as an offering, but also what it means to live in a way that is altered, to live in a way that is changed, changed by God. We started out the series looking at, at worship, and uh, someone who is altered by God is someone who, who worships in a way that is, that is not ashamed, someone who, who presents themselves in, a, in an act of worship daily, but realizes that, that worship is, goes beyond just a few songs that may be sung here and there. It is, it is a lifestyle, isn't it? Worship is a lifestyle. We looked at, at someone who commits themselves each day to being a, a living sacrifice. We explored that, that, uh, that dichotomy or that paradox, if you will, that, that oxymoron that some would say, how, how, how am I a living sacrifice? But we're called and we're enabled by the Holy Spirit to live in that way. Pastor Gabe reminded us last week that someone who is living an altered life is simply seeking more of Jesus. More Jesus. And if you didn't have a chance to hear that message, go back and find it. Find it at our website. Find it on our YouTube page. You will, you will be blessed by that. I want to talk today a little bit as we continue in this vein, talking about what it means to be a living sacrifice offered to the Lord and, and focus on this idea, two, two things. I want to talk about being poured out and also being a, a fragrance that permeate, permeates or soaks the environment around us. Imagine yourself as you look at a, a pitcher of water. I have one with me. I brought a couple of them along. Think of a pitcher of water and think of the opportunities and the possibilities in a pitcher of water. It's a simple pitcher, clear water, ready to drink, ready to, to water plants, ready to use for cleaning, for whatever, whatever you might need water to be used for. Fresh water it represents life that is available and ready to be used by God. This water is ready to be used by God. There's potential and there's blessing and God wants to pour into our lives so that we can pour out. That we might pour out as a blessing to be used for his purpose, for his glory. What, what is the potential of fresh water in a hot desert God calls us to be vessels of his love, his grace, grace, and his truth. And especially so in a world that is spiritually dry, that is deteriorated, that is longing for hope. God desires to pour his blessings and his anointing into our lives so that we might overflow with his goodness, pouring over, used by God. But in order to be truly effective as his followers, as his people, we must be willing to be poured out. There's a pouring out that must take place. Pouring out means, means surrendering completely. It means allowing his love to flow through us. When we choose to be poured out, we, come, we become a channel of God's grace. We become a channel of his blessing to those around us. Just as a, a poured out pitcher can bring relief, can bring nourishment to the thirsty, your life, your life can bring hope, healing, and encouragement to those who are spiritually parched. Your life through Jesus Christ However, being poured out isn't always comfortable, is it? 
It isn't always convenient. It might take some time. It might take surrender. But as we will allow God's blessing and his love to to flow through us, others will be touched. The Bible says this in Romans chapter 12 and verse 1. Dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all that he has done for you. Because of all that he has done for you, let them be a holy and living sacrifice. The kind that he will find acceptable because this is truly the way to worship him. The, the, the idea, the, the, the main The emphasis that I want us to to hear today, that I believe the Lord wants us to hear, is that a living sacrifice is one that is acceptable, and it it is fragrant, and it it permeates, it soaks everything around the altar. But there is preparation that is necessary before the pouring. There's preparation that is necessary. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for your word today. God, help us to hear. Help us to to lean in. Help us to be sensitive to your Holy Spirit and how you're leading us. What you're saying in this moment. In Jesus' name, amen. Paul is pleading. Paul is pleading in Romans. He says, give yourself to God in light of all that he has done for you. Give yourself to God as a living sacrifice. And I think it's appropriate to make an observation right away that Paul is someone who lived, not only only taught what God asked him to teach, taught what the Holy Spirit led him to, to preach, but he also lived what he taught. Paul lived what he taught. He was willing to do what he was teaching others. He said, let your life be a living and holy sacrifice. And yet, he also would go on to say in Scripture that it was, he found it to be a joy if he lost his life, if it was an offering for the Lord. Watch what he says In Philippians chapter 2 and verse 17, he said, I will rejoice even if I lose my life, pouring it out like a liquid offering to God, just like your faithful service is an offering to God. And I want all of you to share that joy. When you think of your life, when you think of those things that make you feel fortunate, those things that make you feel like you are blessed. What are the things that come to mind? We often, we often say, you know, we're blessed when, when we have moments with, with family, right? Good, man, good moments, good memories, gathering together with family. We feel blessed. When, when kids are, are healthy, we feel fortunate, don't we? When we have our own health, we feel blessed. When we, when we have a, a, a skill or an ability or, or an opportunity to be used of God, we consider ourselves fortunate. We consider ourselves blessed. Paul, the apostle of God, considered himself fortunate if he could contribute to the glory of Christ. He considered himself blessed and fortunate to contribute to the glory of Christ, to the the growth of the church, to the well-being of people's souls. That's where he found his greatest joy, even if it meant sacrificing his own safety, his own wellness, even his own life. He said, I would willingly give myself as a sacrifice to support the faith of God's chosen people. And we know that he did that. This is a model for us to imitate, church. This is a model for us to follow, to be those who 
are willing to, to give what God asks of us, but more so to be willing to practice what we teach, to practice what we talk about, to, to live what we say, to be who we say we are as followers of Jesus. Because let's, let's be real today, we appreciate that when we see that in others, don't we? And we sure, we sure dislike it when we see, when we experience someone who does not live in that way, who says one thing but does another, who, who says, well, you should do this, but as for me, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it this way. Every parent knows that, that you'll, you'll drive kids crazy when, when, when you say, do as I say, not as I do. It just doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't mesh together. It doesn't flow. We appreciate that when we see it in someone else, when they live what they teach and preach. When someone hears the message of Christ, and, and, and when they hear the gospel, they are looking for authenticity. They're seeking authenticity. There's someone seeking someone who is authentic in a world that is full of imitation, in a world that's full of personal promotion, in a world that is full of hypocrisy. People don't want perfection. Sometimes we, we, we think, well, I, I can't, I'll just never measure up. I'll never be who God wants me to be because, because I have to be perfect. No, the world isn't seeking perfection, but they are seeking. Those who are listening to followers of Jesus are seeking authenticity. Authenticity. That is what an altered life should look like. One that is, that is poured out for the Lord in which the way it's, one lives matches with what they say, becoming more and more conformed into the image of Jesus. When our lives match up with our words, we, we, we permeate, we, we filter, we, we, we soak through the world around us with the gospel of Jesus Christ. So Paul lived this, this altered life. And, and he goes on in other places in Scripture. In fact, in Romans, he says this, Romans 6 and 19. He says, Because of the weakness of your human nature, I am using the illustration of slavery to help you understand all this. Previously, you let yourselves be slaves to impurity and lawlessness, which led deeper, even deeper, into sin. But now you must give yourselves to be slaves to righteous living so that you will become holy. Give yourselves, Paul says, to be slaves, not to the way you used to live, not to impurity, not to lawlessness, not to sin. Give yourself, offer yourself, pour out yourself to righteous living. And Paul realized in living a poured out life, that his worth came not from what he had, but what he could give. Paul's worth, he realized, it didn't come from what he had, but what he could give. He, he, in fact, it says, he says, I offer my life to God like a, a slave. Thinking of, of who you used to be. Where, where did you what did you look like before Jesus? What did you, before the work of Christ, before you were in Christ, you were, you were deep in sin. You were walking your own way. You were walking contrary to God's word. But there, there comes a time when, when the follower of Jesus, when the, when the flip, when the script is flipped, when the narrative changes, and Paul is describing this change. He's urging us to present ourselves as slaves to the righteousness. He uses, he uses the Greek word doulos. It's related to the word doula. It means, it means slave, bondman, devoted to, to someone else with the disregard for one's own interests. Someone who, who is a, a servant. Someone who is an attendant. Paul says, you were, you used to be. Lost in your own way, lost in, lost in sin. He says, now walk as a servant. 
We are to view ourselves as 100% poured out, always in service to God. But that means disregarding some of the things that, that we used to do. That maybe means disregarding some of our, our, our own interests. It's hard, and it doesn't happen automatically, because we are, by nature, we have, a, we have a selfish nature within us, don't we? We have a selfish, sinful nature. We are self-absorbed. We look out for our own wants, our own desires, and our own interests. We think of this word, we think of the word servant and, 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 and doulos. Uh, when you think back to what Mary said when she was called by God in, to be the mother of Jesus. In Luke, this word is same, this, the same word is used when Mary says, I am your handmaiden. This is the idea that's portrayed here. I am available, Lord. What would you have of me. Our worth in the kingdom of God cannot be built on, on what we obtain or what we accomplish. Our worth, our worth is found in what we offer, in what we give. As a servant devoted to righteousness, our worth in Christ is all tied to what we give. Paul said it this way again in Philippians 2:17, I will rejoice even if I lose my life, pouring it out. I will rejoice when I pour out my life as an offering. When I pour it out for my Lord and my Savior. Drink offerings in biblical times were, were offerings poured out for, for a, a deity. It was, studies tell us it was one of the oldest and perhaps least understood religious rituals. The sacrifice of, of pouring out liquid, its, its primary importance seems to lie in the act of pouring because the liquids that are poured out, they were, they were it was done in various places. They would, the liquids would change, the places would change, but we, but we know this. Philippians, in chapter 2 and verse 17, Paul uses a word which, which, which translates to pour out as a drink offering or to make a libation. A drink offering is a valuable liquid poured out as a gift to God. And once it's poured, it's, it's, it's poured on the ground. It can't be gathered back up. The giver can no longer be benefit from the liquid once it's given because it can't be gathered or repurposed. It's poured out for God. See, there is, there is pleasure that comes in the pouring. There is satisfaction. There is fulfillment that comes in the pouring. There is gladness that comes through the giving. See, Paul took pleasure and joy from giving up his life for God. He said in Acts chapter 20, my life is worth nothing to me unless I use it for finishing the work assigned me by the Lord Jesus. The work of telling others the good news about the wonderful grace of God. Paul knew that his worth his value, it didn't come in what he had, but in what he could give. An altered life is one in which we consider ourselves a, a fragrant offering or an acceptable sacrifice for God by pouring ourselves out for his kingdom and his righteousness. And the scent of that fragrant offering will, will permeate. It will, it will soak through. It will affect everything around it. Paul wrote it this way in 2 Corinthians chapter 2. Thanks be to God who in Christ always leads us in triumphal procession. Jesus is our leader. And through us spreads the fragrance of the knowledge of him everywhere. You're called by God to be a 
a fragrance spreader. Some of you do that with the colognes and the perfumes you wear, and you, and you maybe do it a little too much. Ask your neighbor. I don't, some of you have very, very nice, pleasant fragrances that you wear with you. But we're called by God to spread his fragrance, the fragrance of the gospel. Our worth in Jesus comes from what we give, not in what we gather, not in what we keep, not in what we gain. And it's also important to understand that before the pouring, before the sharing of the fragrance, there is a processing. There is processing before the pouring. I brought along I brought along some cologne. This is the one that Jennifer gifted to me a while back. She likes this one. I like to wear it when I know that I'll be near her. Ancient perfumes studies tell us that ancient perfumes were made from plants, from, from fruits, from, from different types of wood and, and, and different um, secretions where there was a process that would involve boiling and, and processing, pressing and crushing to obtain a fragrance strong enough to fill a room. But, but there was hard processes that would occur in order to, to get to that fragrance. After it's all said and done, there's, a, there's, a, there's quite a process in making most perfumes. And since then, perfume manufacturers, they've come a long way. But many of those extraction methods remain tedious. Extracting scents from, from plants. And, and you know that, that good, good colognes, good perfumes, they aren't, they aren't cheap. They're valuable. There's a process that goes into extracting them. And they're powerful, they're potent. They remain for, for a while. In 1952, there was a milk truck driver, driver in northern New York, and he complained to a gentleman about the smell of, of spilled milk in his truck. To address this issue, this man that he complained to, his name was Julius. To address the issue, Julius combined exceptional fragrances with, with specialized absorbent paper, and he invented the first car air freshener. What do you think that he invented? The little tree. In fact, I have some royal pine little trees that I brought along today. Thought we'd open these up a little bit, get some pine going in the room. Some little trees. He gave, he gave it the shape of an, ab, of, a, of an evergreen tree to honor his years of extracting aromatic oils in Canada's pine forests. I'm starting to get some of that right now. These air fresheners, they, 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 they proved to be an efficient and high quality solution to a common problem. And that was people's vehicles not, not smelling great. You know, in this case, it was a milkman who wanted to get rid of the, the, the scent of spilled milk, sour milk. And they, they, they expanded. The first scents were royal pine and spice and bouquet, but they've, they've now expanded to include the Caribbean colada and vanilla aroma. Of course, you know, the ever-popular new car scent. Some of you, you put that in your own car. You want to keep that new smell going longer. Black ice is very popular. The tree air fresheners, they're, in fact, you may not know this, but they are manufactured in eastern Iowa, these, these little air fresheners. You didn't know that. You, you Iowans, that's something that you can be proud of, the little tree air fresheners. <laughs> but something small, something in this package, it's got a little scent. You know that these last for a while, and then eventually they'll kind of they'll kinda die out but they help to change the, change the aroma, change the smell, change the scent in a room. When we are offerings poured out for God, we are, we are fragrance spreaders. 
We spread the fragrance of the gospel. And, and the truth is, is there may be some, some difficulty or some pain involved in that process. Just as ancient processes for, for perfume involve some crushing and some extraction, there could be some pain involved. There could be some difficulty involved. Romans chapter 5 tells us that we can rejoice when we run into problems and trials, for we know that they help us develop endurance. And endurance develops strength of character. And character strengthens our confident hope of salvation. And this hope will not lead to disappointment, for we know how dearly God loves us because he has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with his love. Let's, let's be real today. Processing can hurt. Crushing can be painful. Feeling like you're being sent through the, the, the wood chipper or the grinder. Feeling like you're being crushed. But we can choose how we want to respond in those moments. We can make a choice with the help of the Holy Spirit who God has given to us. We can say, this hurts, and I want out, and I want to I pull the eject handle. Or we can say, you know what? This hurts a little right now, but something better is coming on the other side. Something better is coming on the other side. Because it's all about heavenly perspective. And so I want to encourage us today as we, as we think of this process of being, of being poured as we think about the process of, of being opened up. See, these, this fragrance does nothing sealed in the, in the package. We need to open this thing up. We need to make it available. We need to open our lives up and make ourselves available to the Lord and what he wants to do as a living sacrifice. There will be testing involved. There will be processes involved that seem difficult in the moment. But if we will allow the Lord to shape our perspective, we realize that he has a purpose. Just as you would as a, as a student or, or a, a business owner or as, or as an employee, there's, there's work sometimes that, you, that we submit for inspection. Isn't there? There's, there's reviews that happen. There's, there's putting a, a product out there for the customer, and the customer decides if they like the product. We, we submit to the best of our ability, and, and the, we, we know that, that in order to, to keep a job or to, to move up, we must work, submit to testing to the best of our ability. There will be some sacrifice in the process. And sometimes we would pray, Lord, deliver me from this. I don't want to go through this. This pouring out hurts. It's tiring. It's difficult. We can pray for deliverance from the pouring, from the crushing, from the pressing, but we can also pray and believe for the Spirit of God who delivers us through it. He wants to deliver us through it, church. He's there in the midst of it. Paul said it this way in 2 Corinthians chapter 12. It was Jesus who said to him, my grace is all you need. My power works best in weakness. So now I am glad to boast about my weaknesses so that the power of Christ can work through me. That's why I take pleasure in my weaknesses and in insults and in hardships, persecutions and troubles that I suffer for Christ. For when I am weak, then I am. Paul said it. Paul declared it. And it's just as true today, right now, as when Paul said it. When the Holy Spirit inspired him to write it. He experienced it. And it's available for us today. The Holy Spirit can deliver us from some things, but he can also give us the grace. God can give us the grace to deliver us through. And we need that grace. 
It doesn't always make sense. It doesn't always work out how we think it will work out, but we can believe in faith in the God who loves and cares, who has a purpose in the pouring. He's calling you to be poured out. He's calling us to to not sit on the side and not just leave it to others. He's calling each of us. When we pour ourselves out, when we give, we realize that it's not all about me. It won't be all about you. And when life isn't all about you, it lives far beyond you. When our lives aren't about us, things happen and it it, it lives beyond us. It affects eternity. It affects the lives of others. But when it is all about us, when it's focused on what, when my life is focused on what I can get, what I can do, who I can be, what I can hold on to. And when my time's done, it's gone. When your time's done, when your time is done, it's gone. But when life isn't all about you, it will live beyond you. If we are to be fragrant offerings to God, we will likely need some refining to extract the best. We will likely need some refining. It's it's the good stuff that that shows up in that refining process. It's a process that the Lord wants us to, to yield and submit ourselves to as a living sacrifice of perfecting and refining. It could be a process of of trial, temptation. And it might seem easier to play it safe. Some might sit and say, well, I don't, why why would I want to go through that? Why would I want to submit myself to hardship, to difficulty, to pressing? But life in Christ, if, if if we are saved by his grace, if we are, if we are covered by the, by, the, by the shed blood, by the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. Life is about glorifying God. And to glorify God, there are opportunities that we must take a hold of. It might be safer to not take any chances. It might be safer to just kind of maintain the status quo. But playing safe means you're just existing. It's just existing. That's not, that's not living the way that God called us to live. He called us to live. Jesus said, I have come that you might have life to the fullness, to the full, right? In abundance. He is the way. He is the truth. He is the life, and he's called us not to play it safe. A living sacrifice, one that is, that is poured out. Looks for opportunities. Goes to the Lord and gets refilled. And gets filled back up. And looks for ways to pour out. To make a difference. Not to play it safe a living sacrifice, a fragrant offering, soaking through everything it comes into contact with. Again, Paul said it, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind that he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. So the question for us, today as we close is this. Do you smell? I'll just 
just leave these up here on the altar? Maybe, 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 no. <laughs> no, do, do, what? Maybe the better way to ask that question is, what do you smell like? What are you, what are you, what fragrance are you sharing with the world? What are you pouring out? What is God doing in you and through your life that is affecting the world around you? Do you, do you stink a little bit because you're stagnant? Some stagnant things, things that, things that just sit, they tend, to, they tend to develop a little bit of a scent after a while, don't they? It's not fresh. <laughs> we weren't meant to just, to just sit and get stinky. We were meant to be filled by God, to offer ourselves as a living sacrifice, poured out and be fragrant be a blessing because we have been processed and poured out by God. Amen. That's what we're intended for. Stand with me please as we